Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Before I continue I'd like to say this video is specifically targeted towards those of you who are taking the BMAT, the Biomedic Admissions Test. So if you aren't taking the test this video might not be the most interesting to you but if you want to learn more about how you know medics sort of apply to universities please carry on watching. Now a lot of you have been messaging me on Instagram even commenting on the YouTube you know comments saying Sen please give us tips, give us advice, give us motivation for the BMAT. So before I continue, check these videos out. Right, so I made these videos last year and I think they are extremely useful when it comes to uh, me giving my tips to you guys. So make sure you check them out. Now, I did make these videos last year, so I only had around what, like a thousand followers. Now I've got over six and a half or whatever. And so there are a lot of you new guys who maybe don't know about these videos I made. The links to these videos are all in the description down below. They are extremely useful. Watch them, maybe make notes and use these tips in your revision. Given that you've watched those videos, today is going to be more of a summary. It's going to be more motivation. It's going to be more general tips that you can use to do well in the exam. So the exam is one week away. Um, for those of you who've been kind of on it, the last few weeks would have been full of revision from getting through section one past papers to doing, I don't know, Medify questions, doing BMAT Ninja questions, doing Union Admissions questions, using the ISC book. A lot of you would have been doing questions. If you haven't yet started revising, then, you know, get started now. So for section one, yes, a lot of you would have been doing past papers. For those of you who are a bit more organized and a bit more on the ball, you may have even gotten onto the TSA papers, uh, the Thinking Skills Assessment papers by Oxford and Cambridge. They're really similar to section one. Section two would have been, I think, for most of you, um, you know, just a matter of going through the CGP, like online official BMAT revision guide they've got, looking through your own GCC notes, but also making like concise revision notes for section two, allowing you to consolidate the theory. A lot of you by now would have also started doing section two examination papers, the past papers available on the BMAT website, but also again, questions from BMAT Ninja, Union Admissions, Medify, whatever, whatever, doing questions like that. Great. Now for section three, a lot of people I know who are doing the exam this year, they've been just writing draft essays, making essay plans, really, really developing their ideas and their ability to think of as many points as possible in let's say the five minutes that you have to plan the BMAT essay. Remember it's a half an hour essay and it's also, it's not even A4, it's really short. So you need to make sure you have quality points. Um, and to get quality points, often you need to think of, I don't know, 10 different ideas and then select sort of cherry pick six of those ideas and then make your arguments using those. But let me quickly give you some motivation and then I'll go through each of the sections in a bit more detail. I don't want to make this video too long to be fair. You guys are revising and the last thing you should be doing right now is watching YouTube. So let's get to it. BMAT's one week away. It's this last week which I think makes a huge difference when it comes to performance. The last few weeks would have been relatively relaxed revision. You would have gone through theory, you would have gone through past papers. Now is the critical time where you begin looking at your mistakes. The next few days are extremely important when it comes to reviewing mistakes and learning and going through those topics that you've made mistakes in again and again and again. Even for section one, if you're always screwing up probability questions, look up some, I don't know, probability tree questions, see how you can work out probabilities really quickly and find shortcuts. Go and sort these things out now. Get this sorted in the next few days because you really can't afford to do these sorts of things the night before the exam. So let's say you have roughly six or seven days. The next three days will be intense, reviewing your mistakes, learning those last minute topics and getting them into your head, maybe doing mind maps, maybe trying to memorize all the equations you need to know. Then a few days before the exam, it's just really starting to wind up with the questions. The BMAT is a fast paced exam. Section one, I think you have 35 questions in 60 minutes. Section two, you have 30 questions in 30 minutes, which is crazy. And then lastly, you have the BMAT essay, which is half an hour. So this is a two hour exam. It's relentless, it's nonstop. Technically, you do have small breaks when they're giving you exam papers, but even that, it's not significant. So ultimately, the three days right before the exam, you should be just winding up by doing questions, getting used to that fast paced nature of the examination. I personally think that over the next few days, you know, in the last week before the exam, you should stop using online resources or online practice ways to revise the BMAT. Why am I saying this? Well, the BMAT is actually a pen and paper exam. You're not going to have a computer, you're not going to have a calculator. Don't worry about the printing costs. Go and print out the past papers for the BMAT exam and start doing them by pen and paper. Of course, use a computer to find the mark schemes and to mark the exams, to watch YouTube videos, to watch tutorials, to find notes and stuff. But don't actually do questions on the computer anymore. When it comes to the exam, you need to get used to doing quick calculations on the paper. You need to be very good at marking the multiple choice answers on the actual examination paper. Don't forget, this is an MCQ exam, a multiple choice examination. So 
even if you sort of work out the answer on your question paper, you need to leave at least four or five minutes to actually transfer all your answers onto the MCQ marking sheet. It's marked by a computer for section one and section two. Let's say you spend 60 minutes for section one just answering all the questions. Once the bell rings, you're screwed because you haven't put your answers on the actual uh, MCQ sheet and then you won't get any marks at all. So technically you only have 55 minutes to do the exam because you need to leave five minutes to mark in your answers. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, but yeah, get on and deal with it. So that's the reality of the exam. It's a fast paced exam, it's relentless and you know it's a big relief when it's over you kind of come out the exam you kind of dazed you're like holy crap what just went by but you are very relieved and i can guarantee that you'll have that feeling so now is a time where you've really pushed yourself where you really work and then you can really enjoy that feeling of relief after the exam last but not least in this sort of time period you need to start gearing your mind into exam mode um you know bmat exam isn't like your gccs or a levels we have you know a week and a half or two weeks of exams it's just a one-off exam so yeah, I wouldn't say you need to change your whole sleep schedule and everything the week before to try and get used to it. Just make sure sort of the few days before the exam, you drink more water, you start eating a bit more healthily. You don't want to actually get ill before the exam. If you, let's say, are eating like tons of takeaways or whatever <laughs> before the exam, there's a very high chance you might, you know, I don't know, have an upset stomach. You want to just make it as easy as possible for yourself when you're sitting the exam. Drink lots of water, guys. People say that you're thirsty because your body is already dehydrated to an extent where your body's trying to alert you. You know, drink water, otherwise you're gonna get dehydrated. So don't wait until you're thirsty to drink water. Just have a glass of water or have a bottle of water next to you when you're revising and keep sipping it as you go along. When you wake up, drink a glass of water. Before you go to bed, drink a glass of water. Motivation over, you've got some action plans. Let's quickly move on to section one, two, three. So section one, to summarize the main tips. So, what do you need to do? Section one is a section where you can really get stuck with some questions in terms of there are a mix of easy questions and hard questions and these are all just you know randomly jumbled throughout the 35 questions like i said in my past videos you need to get good at answering the questions which are pretty straightforward you need to get those easy marks and sort of build yourself to that level 5 5.5 then once you go through the exam once when you try and answer the questions that are easy and you secure those marks go back to the harder questions which require a bit more time and these are the sorts of questions which if you get right will bump you up to the sixes or the sevens. The last thing you should really do is get stuck on one question, spend too long on that question and then screw up the exam by not answering 15 or 20 of the questions. That's the worst thing you can do. So make sure you get to the end of the paper. Even if you don't answer every single question, make sure that the questions you answer up until the end you know are correct. When it comes to section one questions, it's truly a matter of reading the questions slowly and clearly to yourself. If you try and read these questions too fast, you end up actually uh, missing a few bits of information. A few slight words in section one questions can really change the meaning of you know, the whole paragraph of the whole sentence. So take your time when you're reading big bits of paragraph and make sure you underline key bits of text. Also, I recommend you skimming through the questions before you um, actually begin reading a big bit of text because then you kind of can selectively uh, read so when you sort of do read the paragraph you're like, oh actually yep yeah, i read that question just before and i know i need to come back to this part of the paragraph to answer that question so then you can very quickly reference the different parts of the text once you go back to the question when you're answering it instead of having to find it for the first time again as you do each question if that kind of makes sense i don't know maybe it does maybe it doesn't but for those of you who understood that you know use that technique the last sort of section one tip I have is don't give up. Uh, I know that when I did the exam, I actually left out four or five questions. Um, the good thing about BMAT is it is a negatively marked. So if you do get something wrong, you don't get a mark taken off. I remember my second year medical exam, so pathology, it was negatively marked. So even if you guessed and you guessed wrong, unfortunately, they actually take a mark away from your total score. So that wasn't too helpful from them. BMAT, that's not the case. So even if you do make a guess, let's say an educated guess, then it's always worth putting an answer down. Yeah, so pretty much for section one especially, make sure you fill in the MCQ sheet as you go along. And please, please make sure that your answers don't frame shift. A lot of students I know when they're filling in answers at the end really quickly for section one, they just get really tense and they start filling in the numbers really quickly. Maybe they end up putting the answer for question four 
as the answer for question five, then everything shifts one up. But they don't realize until they get to like, I don't know, question 20. So be really careful when it comes to that. If it's question one, put your finger in question one, mark it in. Question two, question two, question three, question three. Be really careful. Okay, fine, section two, let's move on. Section two, what can you do over the next few days? Number one, get your equations right. This is science, right? Science is based upon equations. Equations pretty much summarize topics and summarize concepts. So if you get to physics, memorize the equations for it. If you get to chemistry, memorize the core concepts of how to balance equations, how to do uh, like molar calculations and memorize those equations. Just literally go and Google and search for BMAT chemistry equation sheet PDF or something, or physics BMAT equations sheet PDF. You'll find an absolute ton of resources. Sorry to swear, but it's actually true. So stop being lazy and go and find those things and use them to your advantage. Next thing about section two is actually being good at sort of units. So they really try and catch you out in units. From chemistry to physics, um, to even maths, some equations, some, yeah, some equations just require you to use certain units. So let's say, I don't know, let's take F equals MA for example. Force is always measured in newtons, mass is always measured in kil kilograms, and acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared. So to try and trick you, the question might give you the unit in grams. The question might give you acceleration as, I don't know, a graph of velocity divided by time. So you might need to work out the gradient of that to work out the acceleration and plug it into the equation. So all these small things they can do to try and confuse you in terms of units. So when you write an equation out, I would suggest actually annotating the equation with the actual unit. And that makes sure that when you plug numbers into the equation, you've actually converted them into the correct unit. Use standard form if you can. So for really large numbers, just really work with standard form. So you've got 50,000, instead of writing five and then uh, like four zeros, just write five times 10 to the power four. And then to be fair, if you're dividing by another really big number, then dividing two numbers in standard form, in my opinion, is much easier than dividing two massive numbers. So use these sorts of shortcuts to really help you cut down on time. Because remember, section two, it's a minute per question, so you need to be fast. Last thing for section two that I can really recommend is don't expand numbers. So let's say you've got square root 10, don't write 3.3. Try and keep thirds or square root signs or cube roots as their own sign. Because sometimes when it comes to like geometric shapes or using Pythagoras and stuff, they like to give you these tricky numbers. So keep numbers in their sort of square rooted form. Don't try and expand them out. Even when it comes to factorizing and working with stuff in brackets, try and not expand brackets unless you have to expand, rearrange and factorize again. Not all of you might understand what I'm talking about, but whoever gets it, then, you know, just take this on board. This video is not to try and teach you the basics of the BMAT. This is a video that's meant to help you sort of prep in the final days before the BMAT. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about now, then I'm kind of sorry you should have prepared all this time. That's sorry, you know, that's the nature of things. So section three, what can you do now to do well in that? Section three, well, the main thing is structure. To get at least a 3A, or well, actually to demand a 3A from the examiners, you simply need to answer the blooming question, seriously. The question is the main question at the top. Yes, then you have three sub questions. So to simply get a three, you need to make sure that your answer directly answers those three sub questions, as well as the main title overall. If you do that, you're guaranteed a three. To get an A, just make sure you write neatly, make sure you write in big handwriting, but also use proper punctuation and spelling. If you try and write in hieroglyphics, or I don't know, French, German or Spanish, then you'll probably get like a B or a C or something bad like that in the exam. Even if your handwriting is terrible, you might get a very bad quality of writing score. If you've got bad handwriting, even if you spell correctly, then to the examiner, a lot of the words will look misspelled and therefore they simply have to give you um, quite a bad score. Now remember, the BMAT essay is marked by two people. So they take the average of two people. So each examiner can give you a number score of 135 and a letter score of ACE. Let's say one examiner gives you a three, the other examiner gives you a five, your actual BMAT score will be a four. And let's say for the grammar section, one person gives you an A, the other person gives you an E, then your actual score will be a C. So do you kind of see how the scores are constructed? So for the BMAT essay, two people do read it, um, but at the end of the day, you want to still make sure that you answer the question. To get higher marks, maybe include more thoughtful points, maybe include examples you've read about, a case study you've come across. There are many common medical cases that everyone's heard about, especially in the news. So use these cases, especially for like ethical questions, um, you know, that could be really helpful. I would say use diagrams, but then not for this essay. The VMA essay is way too short to use diagrams. 
Maybe if you come to Oxford and Cambridge, diagrams get you loads of marks. But yeah, definitely not on the BMAT, so don't do that. And lastly for section three, just make sure you practice now. You've got what, five, six days. So let's say you do three essays a day, that's one and a half hours per day. Right, you're on half time as well, so you've got no excuse. So yeah, do that now and if you think about it, that's 15 essays you know, before the exam comes. So get on to it, stop being lazy. If you want a good mark, that is. If you don't want a good mark, if you just want a normal mark, then take a chill, that's all I can say. Uh, the advice I'm going to give you is going to be straight and to be completely fair, this really isn't the time for you to be watching YouTube. You should be going and doing work. So I'm going to call it a day there. Keep smashing it, keep revising, you know, click off this video, go do another past paper, drink a cup of water, mark the past paper, look at the mistakes, work how you can avoid those mistakes in the future and just, I don't know, write an essay after that, then maybe send it to a friend to read, maybe ask friends to send you their essays, that could work. I would recommend that you go to English teachers to write essays, but it's now half term, so I doubt your English teachers will be, um, you know, able to help you now, it's a bit too late. So yeah, that's my advice over. All the best for the BMAT. I hope this was helpful. If you've got any comments, do comment down below with them. I'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Don't worry, you're not going to fail the BMAT. Um, you're not going to do badly as long as you've put in the effort, as long as you've put in that hard work. A friend of mine says, you know, it's all about marginal gains. Every small thing that you do adds up and eventually it makes a big difference at the end. So keep that in mind. And every time you think, oh, should I really do that work? I've done so much work already. That extra bit of work will make all the difference in the end. Anyway, lovely speaking to you guys. It's always a great privilege to be speaking to you all and I appreciate all your support on the videos. Do you subscribe if you're new. If you did enjoy this video, please like and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.